common concern with rice is the arsenic content. Lucky for us, a new study has some solutions. Arsenic occurs naturally in soil and water, but in rice, because of how it's grown, it gets concentrated tenfold. This can become an issue for people who eat a lot of it, or for people who are more susceptible, like children. So is there a way to reduce the arsenic? We recently saw we can reduce the phytates and lectins from beans just by how we prepare them. So is there a way to get rid of the arsenic from rice as well? A new study compared several cooking methods in parallel. Kind of like one of those cooking reality shows, but the nerd version. The chicken is raw. It's raw, raw, raw. Washing thoroughly or soaking before cooking can reduce the arsenic, but only in white rice, not in brown. And it also reduces a substantial amount of nutrients. So it's not a great solution. Another strategy is to cook the rice in an excess of water and then discard, kind of like how we cook pasta. That method can eliminate arsenic, but it also eliminates a lot of nutrients. A third method is to boil in less water and let the rice absorb it, which keeps the nutrients, but it also keeps the arsenic. So they came up with a hybrid called parboiling. You boil water in excess, say four cups for each cup of rice. When the water is boiling, you throw in the rice for a quick five minute boil, then discard the water and add more, but this time not in excess, say two cups per cup of rice, and cook on low to medium heat until the water is absorbed. This method cut the arsenic in half in the case of brown rice and almost fourfold in the case of white rice. Normally, white rice has less arsenic to begin with. The milling process removes the outer layer of the grain called the bran, which contains most of the arsenic. Problem is, milling also removes a lot of the nutrients. Okay, so parboiling removed the most arsenic out of the methods they tested. Did it also remove the nutrition? No. It was remarkably conservative with little to no change in most nutrients. Jackpot. The reduction in arsenic with this method meant that the amount of rice considered safe to eat was increased by almost fourfold with white rice and approximately twofold for brown. Because of the arsenic, normally the recommended daily limit for safety is less than a cup of cooked rice for adults and only a couple tablespoons for children. Now, this is daily average, so safe amount if you eat it every single day. With the parboiling method, the safe daily limit goes up to one to two cups for adults, approximately one cup for brown, two for white rice, and for children, about a quarter cup to half a cup depending on age. Again, all daily averages. Also, some types of rice have less arsenic than others. According to consumer reports, basmati rice from California, India, or Pakistan has substantially less, while rice from Arkansas, Texas, or Louisiana has the most. Rice-based foods like rice cereal or rice milks also contain arsenic, and it adds up quick, especially for children. In fact, just this summer, the FDA set a limit for arsenic in some commercial baby foods, so it's a step in the right direction. Now, it's important to keep things in perspective. Arsenic in foods is a concern, but not at the level of tobacco or the junk food epidemic. Peace of mind is also crucial for health, and we're already bombarded with silly ideas about food, like are lectins killing us, or is fruit gonna make me fat? So instead of obsessing over exact amounts or running around with an Excel spreadsheet, one simple plan is to have rice sometimes if you want, but not lean on it as a daily staple. I know this is easier in some cultures than others, but the idea is to try to rotate with all the other whole grains. Millet, bulgur, quinoa, barley, etc. That's what I try to do. It may be safer, and it ensures more variety in your diet as well. Here we covered best preparation methods for beans, and here's more on whole grains. Thanks for watching. Catch you next week. Say.